Hello and welcome to the Brown Bag Virtual Lunchtime Series. I'm Dr. Andrea Bowens-Jones and I'm so excited to bring this series back and I'd like to welcome everyone that is joining right now um, or if you've already sent a hello in the chat, I welcome you to go ahead and do that as well because we'd love to just be able to reach out to you and say hello. For those of you that are on, please do keep your uh, mics uh, muted just so we don't have any background noise. We are recording today's session. It will be sent out uh, as well. But I do invite you to turn your cameras on if you want to so that we can look at faces. So today's topic is Girl Talk. And I couldn't think of a better way to bring back this series than with my longtime bestie, friend forever, awesome woman, which I'll fully introduce later on after I do a few announcements. But I am sharing this virtual stage with Z Esther Browning. Yay. Yay. I know, I'm so excited. So a little bit about this series and what I do. Once again, I'm Dr. Andrea Bowens-Jones. If this is your first time joining, I welcome you. If you are returning and you have attended past brown bags, then you're familiar with the format. So um, IDG Vision is the name of my consulting firm. We are a small boutique uh, consulting firm, small but mighty. What we do is individual and team um, uh, professional <laughs> development personal awareness, leadership, communication, and teamwork. In that, I do DIS model for human behavior. I help individuals understand how they're uniquely wired, how they lead, how they communicate, and also 360 degree assessments to help you understand your leadership profile. I do customized coaching plans, mastermind groups, and all those things. To learn more about my services, visit idgvision.com. But also um, you'll hear more about some of the exciting things that we have coming with my uh, uh, co-presenter and lunch buddy today. Go ahead, ladies, get your cameras out. Go ahead, put it up, get that QR code save the date, register, do all those things. The Shine Conference is coming. It's coming. And you're probably wondering, what is the Shine Conference? Myself and Ziesta Browning, and we'll get into it a little bit uh, more later, are hosting at the inaugural G Dreamcasting Brunch. That'll be January 13th, right here in Conyers. And we don't want to leave out some of our folks that are uh, across the globe, we will have streaming options available. We'll be more information about that as we get closer. But for those that are close and because you attended today's brown bag, you can go ahead and get a discount code offer. Uh, tell them uh, what they get a discount off of, Z, really quick. So we already have a discount. So you're getting a discount on a discount. So this discount, we we've already have a we have an early bird uh, registration with just standard registration, is, and then we have our VIP registration, which is really going to uh, put you with some little extra trinkets and surprises. But this brown bag twenty three code is going to give you ten percent off of what we've already discounted our registration for. So it's only going to be available until Monday. So you yes. need to, if you go ahead and make that decision and join us, because I tell you what, we're going to have a good time and we're going to shine together. If you know anything about what we do, we do it yes. in a spirit of excellence and we have a lot of fun. And um, I mean, yeah. I'm so excited about it. Yes. Absolutely. And before we end today, we'll talk a little bit more about the Shine Conference and some of the things that you can expect there, but more to mm -hmm. come. But you heard it here first. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing all of you that are local. Uh, if you want to come to town, please do. We can give you hotel recommendations as well. So Absolutely. see you on January 13th. All right. So let's get down to business because we have something to talk about today. We're going to talk about purpose, passion, and position. And I want to kick off with this quote by Nelson Mandela. He said, there is no passion to be found playing small in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. In that is, mm -hmm. is wrapped up so much stuff. And one of the things that mm -hmm. is clear is that if you're going to follow your passion, it's going to take boldness. It's going to take courage. And it's got to be big 
because God didn't create small, right? Yeah. He does things big. And so I'm so excited to talk about this topic. I think it's the perfect topic to kind of help us with the momentum as we build up to the Shine Conference. So with that being said, it's time to meet my lunch buddy. <laughs> and a little Hello. bit about my lunch buddy. Let me introduce her officially, but I, of course, I'm going to let Z tell her own story. But Z Esther Browning is CEO and founder of the Becoming Project Inc. Z Esther is a trailblazer in the world of CRM technology, a seasoned expert in Salesforce community, and the visionary leader behind the Becoming Project, which we'll hear more about. Known affectionately as the Salesforce lady, Ziester has dedicated her life to empowering underrepresented and marginalized individuals through technology. With that, I welcome you officially to our virtual stage, Ziester. And I want you to just kind of introduce yourself, but I want you to kind of set the stage for today's topic of purpose, passion, and position. What does that mean to you? Absolutely. But first, let me just say a warm welcome to everyone for joining us. And uh, if I hear you call me Ziester one more time, I think I'm going to fall out. <laughs> everybody who knows me, including everyone who's me, okay. um, everybody knows me as Z. So I'm just going to lay that out there. I'm Z. Giving your full cool government Z. name. <laughs> I'm talking about really, they're going to be able to look me up on the internet. But, um, you, know, you know, I'm. It, it's it's just you know, to be here to talk about purpose, passion, and positioning is absolutely what is ingrained. I believe it's just in my blood. And it's the reason that I started the Becoming Project, Inc. in the first place. Uh, we're a nonprofit 501c3. We've been uh, doing what we do for 14 years, and it seems crazy now. But it started with purpose and passion, and you know, really it started with a decision. And so uh, a little bit about myself, um, I am a, a single mom of two boys, two men now. My mm -hmm. oldest is 20, oh, 32 and my youngest is 23. But at the time that I started, you think about it, 14 years, um, the nonprofit and 17 years in the industry of Salesforce, you can see how their lives were, they were very young. And me getting into technology as a single mom, I had <laughs> more months than money. <laughs> um, I had to make decisions over and over again. I don't know if anybody out there can can relate to having to make decisions over and over again um, based on not having enough financially to take care of what you needed to take care of. And it wasn't just money driven. It was, I had things that I wanted to do for my children, an atmosphere that I wanted them to live in. And also for myself, I don't want to be stressed out. And uh, I went to Europe on a vacation. I, I had gotten an IT job. Look, that's a whole nother story for another day, but I'm gonna try to cut it short. I got mm -hmm. an IT job and it was stressful. I was 24 by 7 organization. I went to uh, Europe for 10 days for my birthday, went to Paris, and I was there, and I liked myself. Like, I was like, girl, <laughs> you're funny, and you're fun. Yes. And it was there at the foot of the Eiffel Tower that I found my passion, which was really about allowing and helping other people find their passion and helping other people become. And it's, it's like there's an individual greatness in all of us. And it was there that I realized that I'm unique. You know, there is something powerful about you, girl. There's some value in yes. you that yes. you're just putting to the side. And so I came back, and I don't I don't suggest this for everybody, but I came back and immediately put my uh, resignation in for my high Oh my gosh, we have so much job. in common. <laughs> Lost my straight up mind, honey. And um, and I ended up, but God, it was a God thing. And I can definitely tell you when uh, God begins to show you who you are, which is your purpose, your God purpose, and that, that your God identity um 
it actually exposes that purpose. And you start thinking, why Why am I loud? Why am I funny? Why is my nose this way? Why am I this height? You know, all of the things that you may have discredited or devalued, they become so important when you uh, identify your purpose and when you are able to connect with right. it. And so I started the Becoming Project, the right. Becoming Project, as a way uh, to help people become help them identify that individual greatness and and knowing that purpose, passion, position, all of those things really work in concert together to be able to yeah. propel us forward in progress. And so I'm so super excited. I'm so much happier than I was at that day. I was sitting at the feet of of, of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Yeah, uh, so much of what you said I could resonate with, even down to putting in the resignation that mm-hmm. day it, it's illuminated the path before. But everybody, it doesn't happen like that for everybody the same way. Is for me, it was sitting in the midst of a conference and hearing a pastor preach, and it confirmed everything I I knew to be about me and what mm-hmm. I was supposed to do in that season. But what about the folks that are? struggling a little bit, uh, still trying to figure it out. What kind of advice do you have when someone is in search of things? So the thing about purpose, purpose is hidden in plain sight. You know, uh, it's from the foundation. Everybody know me. I'm 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 a pastor to y'all. So I, I got God all up in the middle of everything that I I, I'm in if I'm encapsulated and wrapped in 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 the things of God. So I'm going I'm going to talk about Him, but I believe that if you're looking for your purpose, just connect to God. He yeah. is the Creator. He is who has created you from, from the foundations of the earth, and there are clues in what you have been doing naturally. I think that you know no one. There's no one on this planet that doesn't have a purpose, but you may not have connected to it because you've you have all of these distractions. So one of the one of the things that I I do I actually have a small group of individuals that I've I've mentored in the past, and we call it a safe place to be destroyed. You need a safe place where you can be. It's almost like a cocoon where you can allow the things that you've picked up that don't fit you to be broken off so that you can now be reshaped and and get reintroduced to the things that are just brilliant about you yes. you know that that those things that make you so unique the things that inspire the imaginations of heaven you will start seeing your genius show up in these designated places of purpose so if you if you've ever been in a place where you said, "Oh my goodness, I really enjoyed doing that." Um I have a sister, her thing is event planning. She planned an event and from there her heart just sang forever. And she is the ultimate in event planning, mm-hmm. right? And so that's the kind of thing you start looking for indicators of genius. And mm-hmm. then again, like I said, okay. it sometimes it starts at a place of safety, and it requires that you release some things that you have built up around you to define yourself that don't fit. Oh, I love that. Looking for the genius. Now is going to be a time for everyone to participate. I'm going to put up a poll, and in it, I want you to go ahead and answer the poll uh, according to these, I think it's three questions on there. This is your way to participate. So I'm looking forward to having 100% participation in it. And then we'll share the results uh, from the poll. So everyone see the poll on the screen? Can you see the poll, Z? I can. I'm, I'm answering yes, myself. All right, good. I'm just making sure everybody sees it. Yes, this is how you participate. And then we'll go over the questions together. There was an extra question. I'm just going to choose one. (laughs) For number four? 
Yeah. Yes. That. that was a blank <laughs> one that should not have been in there. Thank you. <laughs> just choose anything. It won't matter. Hey, for I just choose. I chose one. We oh, sorry, number Kayla, one. You, you can't see the questions. Are you on your phone? It may be on your phone. And if you're on your phone, you have to switch the screens with Zoom uh, in order to see the questions. Yeah, so try sliding from side to side and see if the poll comes up. Did that help? No, it didn't. Okay. Mm. I'm sorry, because I don't know how to do it. Because usually it's if you can toggle between them. What do you think? Mm. All right, I'm gonna give a few more seconds so you can get your lasting 10 more seconds so you can get your last of it. And then I'm gonna end the poll. And if you did get a chance to put your response in the poll and you're okay with it, you can drop it in the chat. So five, four, three, two, one, poll is ending. And I'm gonna share results here. All right, so our first question was, in the last six months, I have felt like I was trading my passion for a paycheck. And 44% uh, of you said, I agree. 13% um, strongly agree. So more agree that you have been living in this space where you go to work, you get a check. The reason why I know that to be true, I have lived that. That, that was me. Yes, <laughs> As, absolutely. I am confident that I am operating in my purpose. 44% uh, of you said disagree, 38% uh, said you agree, and 19% uh, of you said you strongly agree that you're operating in your purpose. Awesome, awesome. Uh, for those that disagree, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. And then the, the final real question, not the fake <laughs> question, number four, is I felt like I am perfectly positioned to make progress. And that progress was up to you to decide what that progress would look like. But I absolutely believe today and our next panel and our Shine Conference can help people be positioned to make progress. 13% 30, uh, of you strongly disagree, 33% uh, strongly disagree that you're not positioned where 33 and 20% of you agreed and strongly agree that you are positioned. So thank you for participating. It helps us understand um, who's here and who's in the room. And then we're not gonna talk about that mysterious four. All right, that's good. And if anybody wanted to jot anything down or if you have questions, please do use the chat function um, as we continue going through. Uh, but there'll be Q and A time, but you don't have to wait until the end to get your questions in. So thank you for participating. Back to our scheduled programming um, that we were talking about. <laughs> A lot of great things you said before we did our panel about um, breaking those things off that that mm -hmm. sometimes we can we become this thing if we're not intentional about becoming something, then we gather up all these identities that are not ours. So I want you to talk mm -hmm. a little bit more about that that cocoon process and what it could look like for someone who is right there at the cusp of becoming that new person, what could that cocoon process look like? Or what did it look like for you, C? So, you know, um, I think for me, um, there is, I, there, I don't know if there's a lot of single moms out there or, or people who have had to really have responsibility at an early age or be responsible for things you tend to uh have a sense of desperation at times mm. and I that desperation I think uh it has to transition into determination and the difference between desperation and determination is intentionality and mm. confidence okay so when we're talking about this um this cocoon or this 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 safe place to be destroyed Sometimes desperation takes you to a place where you're hopeless in the thing that you're doing because there's no fruit, there's no light, 
your genius, that you know, you've just been shut down. There's no imagination from heaven flooding in, and you've isolated yourself from the very the power of God to 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 direct you and move you in fluidity. And so, being in that desperate state, you know, of hopelessness in what you have you sometimes get that start spinning that cocoon and you get into a place where you're focused, you know, and I think um, coming from desperation to determination requires focus and intentionality where you're able to take an honest look at yourself, an honest look at the things that are working and the things that aren't working. Um, for me, I, I'm just going to put myself out there. I was I was like a chronic procrastinator, right? And it, used it to be. From, used to be. I used to I used to be a chronic procrastinator, like chronic, and it it came from being super smart because I didn't have to wait. You know, I I could do something at the last minute; it'd be brilliant. And so I learned to to wait and to calculate just how much time it was going to take me to do a thing. And if it was going to be 40 minutes, I would wait till it was like 45 minutes before I needed to do it, and I would do it then. But this is not a shameless plug for my friend, but she knows I'm going to say this. I attended a mastermind from – uh, Dr. Andrea, I was going to call her my, my name for her, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but I I attended a mastermind, and I'm going to tell you, I did it because she was my friend and she needed some feedback. But what it actually ended up doing, it actually put, it was a safe place for me to begin to break down constructs that I had been operating in my whole life, y'all. I'm saying, I'm thinking I'm good. I'm doing all this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. I, I mean, I'm writing things on the paper that I'm doing, and everybody around me is looking at me saying, girl, you are busy and you are accomplished. But I was busy, but I wasn't productive because I wasn't being intentional. I was just being busy. I was just doing stuff. And so I went to this mastermind, uh, which was eight weeks, where I where you get to – Carve out time for yourself. And I think it was that piece of being intentional about my own personal growth. And as women, as mothers, we don't do that. We're always looking to make everybody else's life better. And so we don't take the time to actually reflect on ourselves and invest that time in ourselves for our our um, improvement. I did that mastermind, y'all. And um, one of the – she know what I'm going to say. This. My takeaways was I pulled a card, and it said, do it now. Yeah. Do it now is my mantra that I live by. Yeah. The stuff that I don't want to do, the stuff that is hard to do, the stuff that is, you know, like confrontational, the stuff that's icky, the stuff that – look, it's not fun. Do it now is my mantra. Because it allows me to overcome this these broken pieces of myself that I have defined. I had defined myself by procrastination. I had defined myself by all of these things that were not working or producing fruit in my life. The moment I broke that construct, my whole life has changed. And I'm not trying to be overly dramatic. It's the truth. Anybody who knows me pre-mastermind and knows me now, you would think that I've always been this way, but I haven't. Now I'm able to create a checklist and do things and progress and, you know, really be productive in the thing, in my purpose. But I want you guys to really think about, like, right now, what is a habit or what is – something, a characteristic that you have defined yourself by that actually is a roadblock or an obstacle that you're constantly having to overcome or overperform, overdo mm -hmm. in order for you to just be productive, just be consistent. You know, it could be consistency, you know, showing up you know, for yourself or for your family. But that's what this 
destruction looks like for me. It's not destruction unto death. It's destruction unto life. And the reason I say uh, a safe place to be destroyed is similar to a cocoon. I'm going to try to do this really quickly. But a, a butterfly, when they spin a cocoon, inside of that cocoon, they actually um, emit uh, acid that destroys their whole body. And what is left is what they call these imaginal cells. Can y'all get that? God created this imaginal cells. And in like these, yes. And in these yeah. imaginal cells, the imaginal cells that survive actually uh, begins to reconstruct this from this goo, from the, the, the caterpillar soup, it creates a butterfly. All of the antenna, the wings, and everything happens in that cocoon. So I think butterflies may be cute, but they're the hardest creature ever that lives. Because if you can spew an acid that's going to destroy you, that's yeah. courage. And that's what we have to do oftentimes. We have to put ourselves in position and connection with people that's going to show us that what we have is not sufficient for what God has taken us. I am blessed to be around people who will show me me. They they are proponents for the purpose that God has in my life and will not let me settle for being less than what yeah. God has created me to be. And I think that itself is that safe place. You got to have somebody that can see you through the eyes and the lens and perspective of God and will remind you of that when you lose sight. You know, what you said, I'm so glad you told the story about the butterfly, because if you didn't, I was going to, as soon as you talked about spinning the cocoon, there's a great quote of, uh, by my Angelo, um, and I'm going to mess it up. So I'm paraphrasing, um, but she <laughs> talks about uh, people marvel at the beauty of the butterfly, but they ever think about the process that it took to get there. Mm -hmm. That process of destruction that you talked about in order to kind of figure it out. Sometimes we fear that because it's scary. Uh, it's very mm -hmm. scary. I went through that. My cocoon process was leaving corporate, walking into this new season. I thought it was going to be easy. Butterfly, I'd butterfly. You know, I'm about to spread my <laughs> wings and do my thing and Everything I learned in the previous season, I was going to take it through the next. And that all that's true. But the part that God doesn't tell you is you go through a process. And that process is what you have kind of taken into the becoming project and allowing mm -hmm. that same place for people to be destroyed, to be put back together. And the other thing that I thought about when you were talking is if we abort that process. So meaning if I go to a tree and there is a cocoon there, and that is happening inside and I break it open and the goo falls all over the place. I have now destroyed that caterpillar's journey to becoming that butterfly. I can't put it back together. Mm -hmm. If we abort the process too early while we're being prepared and built up so that we can walk into our purpose out of fear or, but we procrastinate, we don't do all these things then we never get to see the fruit of that process that we've been going through. Uh, so I think it's something in there and I'd like for you to share perspective on just um, recognizing that it takes time. It takes time ah. for all these things uh, <laughs> to happen. It doesn't happen oh, over 14 years. It does you've not. It. And it's 14 now years. a place where it is like spreading so let's talk a little bit about for folks that are, you're on this journey. And it's a, quite a few of you know your purpose. And so you're walking into it, but recognizing it's not going to happen overnight. So progress can oftentimes look like failure. Yeah. Um, I, I have, because you think about it, um, even with, with what we just talked about, the constructs, the safe place, that you you're you're getting in a safe place. You feel like, oh man, now I'm I, I know more. Now I, I've I've learned my lesson about this who not to trust and what not to do, and I'm 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 getting getting ready to to move forward, not knowing that you're just positioning yourself to break off all of that stuff that you've learned or that you've acquired that's wrong, and so sometimes progress can look like failure to you, and so. 
I, I would be lying if I tell you that everything has been a breeze. I have stopped and started my company more times than yes. I can count. I have started from nothing more times than I can count. I have <laughs> had people that I thought, were for me that were just there to use what God had prepared for me. Yes. Uh oh, can't hear audio, Z. Z. A little bit. Oh, you're back. I'm sorry. The audio went I'm out. Sorry. For a second, but you're back. Oh, I'm sorry. So in that, God gives us the. You have to connect with God. You. There's no way. I. I I'm not. I, I. I. There's no way to do and continue to sustain this journey to move forward. Because the prayer that I began to pray is, God, not to take away the disappointments, not to take away the the, the hurdles or the obstacles, but to, to work on me and to reduce my recovery time to the point where it's just a blip on my timeline. Because mm -hmm. it's about how quickly you can recover. Obstacles are going to come. Disappointments are going to come. But how can are you able to reposition yourself and to be able to recover? You know, um, God has this thing he's given me, and I'm actually writing a book about it, is about directional gifting. And for me, directional gifting is what allows you, when you get off track, to realign and reposition yourself with God to be able to have a top-down experience. See, a top-down experience is you connecting with God and him pouring into you and you being positioned in a place to be filled. But when we have these horizontal experiences where we're <laughs> pouring and directing ourselves outward to everyone else, Sometimes we can get lost, we can get depleted, yes. and yes. we can be completely drawn into a place that God never intended us to go in the first think place. That we are so, doing yeah. it right, though. But that's the thing. Yes, but like, like I'm doing my gifting, I'm operating in it, <laughs> but be misaligned in that whole process. So that's such a great point. Yes. And and even with the Becoming Project, it, the iterative process that you go through of refinement, you, again, you have to be willing to pick up and put down things that no longer serve you. You know, it's like growing as a child. Breast milk was fine when you were first born, but you get some teeth and you start getting some girth on you, you're going to need some baby food, you're going to need some pablum, you're going to need some Collard greens and pot liquor, whatever you do. I'm There's from the South. So, you know, we, we're, we're some chicken. You're going to need some yes. stuff. And yes. that, that baby is going to be slapping that bottle out your head saying, <laughs> give me your plate. And so yes. that's what God wants from us. He wants us to get to the point where what we had before is not satisfying us, that we developed a mature palate for the things that he has for us. Chicken was there when you were born, but you can't eat chicken when you come out the womb. So it's like there's a process of development. And it's the same thing with business. It's the same thing with purpose. I believe that the things that I'm experiencing, the wins and the success that I'm experiencing right now with my organization that God had already had it planned for me, but I I wasn't prepared. I didn't value what I had enough to be able to hold it. So God said, let me put it over here on the shelf until you grow up enough to be able to hold it and not give it away frivol frivol frivolously, just give it to anyone that you'll mm -hmm. hold on to it. Because I can tell y'all when the vision of God on my life was so great that I could not see that I would be able to carry it out. So my first um, inclination was to give it away. Like, okay, I'm going to make this person president of my company. I'm going to make this person. I'm talking about I was giving people high, high power position in my company because I didn't feel like I could do it by myself. So I would tear up, put, build up, tear down, build up, tear down. And it came to the point where God was like, girlfriend, when are you going to realize that it's everything you. that you need, I put it inside of you. If yes. you just sit still and allow me to cultivate you, there's a seed that needs to be broken in you. 
and you you keep holding on to this seed, like putting it over here. No, God, no, God. And God's like, let me break that seed because your fruit and your harvest is going to come from this destruction. Yes. So it's, it's just, it's like that, y'all. I don't know where you are in your journey right now, if you're just realizing your purpose, but I, I need you to understand that God is an accelerant. He will accelerate. What you, once you get in position, you can run fast in that lane, um, and and he'll do that for you. And I've seen more growth. This is no lie, y'all. I have seen more growth in six months than I've seen in six years. Mm-hmm. That's by getting by in. By being aligned. Yes. Like the you. right position. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I want to talk a little bit too. Um, and please do, if you have questions, drop them in the chat. Um, I see one comment. The gooeyness is necessary process. Okay. So in hindsight, it's the God connection that sustains us. Yes. Thank you, Hillary, for putting your hand in uh, for that one. When we were prepping for today's session, we talked a little bit about passion. Um, we uh, talked a little bit about the fuel, the accelerant. I want to go back to that conversation for those that um, that indicated on the poll that they don't quite understand their passion, or maybe even if you do, I want us to spend a little time on this passion piece, because I think um, it's an overused term when we look Mm -hmm. across social media, oh, I'm passionate about this, I'm passionate about cake, I'm passionate about shoes, and we use it so um, frivolously that we minimize what true passion is like when something is given to us from God. So let's talk, let's Let's shed light on the girl talk we had before today's session about passion. Yes. So we were talking, everybody who knows me knows that God gives me pictures. And so I talk in parables. And so he showed me today, he was he showed me a lighter. And everybody knows the big, you got to be old to know the saying, flick my big. But it's a lighter that you flick with your finger. But God was saying, flicking that lighter is like your desire. Like, I, I know that that a fire is supposed to be created. You know your purpose. The purpose is create fire. The desire is rub, clicking that rollerball so that that flint can you ignite something, right? And so, but he said that the passion is the fluid. It's the fuel, Right. Passion fuels you. It's it's what sustains you. So power is the light. You you flick it and it ignites. But in order for you to be sustained, you need to have passion. You that's the fuel that's gonna allow you to go from here to there, from days that don't seem like you've been you've progressed to days that you have these amazing manifestations of wins, right? It looks exactly like what you thought it was supposed to look like. Yes, you know, I love those uh, <laughs> you know, so that whole visual thing. But you got to have this passion. Passion is that fuel, and it continues. And and you might have a spark, and you might, you know, you know, it might go out, and you flick again, and it go out. But once you get it lit, it it it's, it you can get it lit, but. In order to shine, you need passion. And we keep going, hence the shine conference. You need passion. And passion is not something, it's not just, it manifests itself in emotion, right? It manifests itself in a a soul type of emotion type of thing, but it's so spiritual. It is a connection that you have. It's inside of you. in the scripture, you say God gives you the desire of your heart. We often think that that is him just giving us what we want. But I believe that he actually places the desire in our heart so that we can match it up with the thing that he desires us to have. So he makes it one of those making me lie down in green pasture moments when you desire the actual thing that he desires for you to have. So you have this uh, passion to acquire this amazing thing or to embark on this amazing journey. And can I tell you that passion overrides fear? Passion 
will make you stand in front of a crowd of people when you are deathly afraid to talk. Passion will drive you because there's something inside of you that tells you that this is what you need to be doing. This is what I was made for. This is, it's nothing like that. Yeah, I'm That's how you know courage. it clicks into place. It clicks into place for you. Well, have you walking off your job? <laughs> uh, your resignation. That. So we have a question in the chat uh, from Greta. Um, uh, it, was, it was what we talked about before the passion is how do you know when you are aligned? Going back to Ooh. the position piece, how do you know when you're in that right position? Well, the thing about one of the, one of the most important things about knowing you is knowing God. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm going to have to be real with you because and I say this because uh, I grew up in the church. I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. I'm just going to tell you, my, we went to church and we, we slept in church, you know. <laughs> but um, but I did not get my alignment or my understanding during that, that season in my life. It actually came when I... I took 16 years of my life and decided, I, I, man, I'm not going to nobody's church. I'm not going here. I'm not, that's not serving me. You know, I'm good. Me and God good by ourselves. But I took 16 years of, of just me and God. And I think it was weirdness. I'm just going back. I think it was a weirdness experience. But I'm saying all this to say that you know when you're not aligned because the things that, um that that God has for you or that speaks to your spirit you you don't see any type of fruit from it like you you're working and even if even if it's not a financial thing you see the fruit from it like when you are, when you line up with God he's going to encourage you in the things that you're doing. You're going to find a place to keep going even when you're tired, when you're overwhelmed, when you're confused. Every single thing that you need, when you, when it, it's like, if you feel like you are misaligned right now, take a moment and look to the place where you lack. Where is a place that you feel like you're lacking right now? Because Believe it or not, God will expose you to a place where you feel less than so that you can come to him and be filled in that place. That's, that's your mechanism of alignment. That's going to pull you and draw you into a place where you start making adjustments. So start looking at, your, looking at the place where you feel weak. Look at the place where you feel um, like you just, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Start looking at that place where it makes you feel uncomfortable. Those uncomfortable places, that exposure, that vulnerability that you feel, that's going to drive you and direct you towards the place where you need to fill up. If you feel like you're confused, then you need to gain knowledge and wisdom. You need to find that place. If you feel lonely and depressed, you need to find divine connections, wise counsel, people that you know who are Connected. full of the things that you need. The, the, your lack is going to drive your alignment. You do, do you get what I'm saying? It's going to drive your alignment. How do you know that you are, are aligned? It's when you start pouring into other people and you're not depleted. Does that make sense? You pour, you give, you can give all day and you don't feel depleted. But if you're giving and you feel like I have, I can't do this anymore. I don't, I don't have anything to give. It's because you're doing horizontal things and it's top down. Mm -hmm. Long as you are aligned, God is pouring into you. You're not going to feel what you give out. You're not going to feel depleted. Even even if you're weary and tired, you're not going to feel depleted. So when you're looking at that and making an assessment, make an assessment, and it's not, I, I won't say it's a blanket thing. Sometimes you can feel, you can be aligned 
in your business and be misaligned in your home. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you can be aligned with others and misaligned with yourself. Yes. It's, it's like looking at it in totality, looking at your life and who you are in the wholeness and not compartmentalizing or siloing anything. We want to be whole everywhere, yes. right? We want to be full everywhere. And we are designed to overflow. We are not designed for lack. Mm-hmm. And I have this one other thing, mm-hmm. speaking. Whatever you are speaking, if you are, if there is something that you're missing, look at your language. How are you talking in that space? What are you saying about yourself? What are you saying about your situation? Because you can, you can take away and block the flow that's supposed to replenish you, to align you just by the words that you're speaking. So it's a, that same intentionality, you know, that we talked about. But your alignment is going to come from understanding where you where you lack. If you lack in an area, like yes. I said, that's going to be a place that drives you to find that connection with God yeah. and the things that he has for you. I want to add one other thing. Oh, I'm sorry, Greg. I just want to add one other thing is that um, the fact that it's a misconception to think things have to be perfect. And mm-hmm. so I must be misaligned if because things are going to shambles. Uh, don't confuse that. That's that's the trick of the enemy to say that uh, the God is not there because you're going through. Because sometimes that mm-hmm. going through is necessary for you to get to yeah. what we talked about before that butterfly stage. So do we have another question? I can't believe our hour is almost up. What? (laughs) Any other questions? Please drop them in the chat. Oh, I see a question. It said, at what point in your life did you actually realize you were aligned? Uh, that That would be what day, what hour, what minute? Because alignment is a process that you're constantly, it's not something that you achieve. Yeah, it's absolutely cyclical or circular or whatever you want to call it. You, but you learn to adjust. You learn, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a place of fear. I'm speaking from a place, I, I, I'm not, you know, tapping into the power that I have. I'm not operating in my purpose. And and knowing, it starts with knowing who you are. I mean, I'm telling y'all, purpose, knowing what you were designed to do. If you don't know, take some time out. God is not one that's going to keep that information from you. He's yes. just waiting on you to ask. So when you start getting into a place to understand who you are, who God has created you to be, this is going to be the thing. This is going to be your your um thing that you compare like this is what I was correct created to do is this thing damaging me is is God getting glory am I glorifying God am is this thing that I'm doing actually creating and producing fruit and that is another indicator if you produce fruit think about look at the fruit you're producing if you produce a worry if you're producing stress, if you're producing lack, if you're producing depression, and and I'm not saying that this is something. Sometimes we can't control the environment that actually brings these things in our life. But again, we have to be able to God. Oof, He puts people in your life that will pray for you. People in your life that will give you a word, that give you counsel. Even if, even, and I'm talking about God, and maybe somebody is not as, you know, friendly with God as I am. What a friend we have in Jesus. But (laughs) I'm saying you got to have something inside of you that is, that's telling you, hey, I need, I absolutely need to produce. That's something in you. You you are designed to be fruitful. If you don't have no fruit on the vine, 
and it's been more than one season and cycle, then it's time for you to start looking. And so I have had seasons of drought, seasons in which I did not produce fruit because I was um, in in a bad connection, a bad covenant, or mm-hmm. I made stupid decisions. Oh, my goodness. If I could make a list of the stupid decisions that yeah, I've I mean, made on this journey, that, have, yes. that have corrupted the fruit, that prevented the fruit from being, look, don't get me started about that. We have, one more, have, question. Yes, we have <laughs> one more question in the chat, and then we're going to have to wrap up our lunch hour. What do you do when you know the purpose, have seen the vision, but the season you are in just keep producing lack, grief, uh, grief, and just seems like it's not happening? Thank you, Monica, for your question. Ooh, Last come one. On. I know we don't have enough time to unpack it, but let's see if we can but, touch on it just so, a bit. So you wrap. have purpose. So let's, yes. let's start with the top. You know your purpose. So you know what you're designed to do. That's one thing that gives you uh, the hope and the confidence that mm-hmm. I'm not just here by happenstance. So the purpose that you have, you you have to, to lean into that purpose. And you've seen the vision. God gives you a vision so that you won't stop where you are. Yes. He gives you a vision to encourage you. So when you've seen the vision and you know your purpose, but you don't see the thing happening right now, it's because whatever God is doing with you right now is preparation, but he doesn't want you to be discouraged about where you are and for the enemy to lie to you and tell you this is where you're going to die. This is where it all ends. This is all there is for you. So he's giving you the vision, and you have to trust and believe that this will come to pass. God gave me a vision in 2018 that was bigger than anything I could. I didn't even have a job. I had just quit this contract, so I was in between contracts. And he told me that I was going to be the CEO of a multi-billion dollar global IT firm, raising it up. I remember you you told me. Yeah. 2018. (laughs) We are still in the process of that happening. There have been times when my bank account was negative, y'all, and I still believe that I'm a multi-billion dollar global I, a CEO of a multi-billion dollar global IT firm. But the thing about it, God gives you something to hang on to. He gives you the comfort to be able to know that his word remains. It will not return unto him void. So when you can't believe, you're going to have to just lean into him, lean into the word. Um, there's something that I, I tell my students, I tell my, my kids when I was a uh, pastor in children's church, is that I take a journal and I begin to write words. These words, uh, it may be scripture, is whatever that you know. These are truths, right? Um, a drop of truth dispels a sea of lies. So all you, a drop of light dispels a sea of darkness. So if you begin to write truth and you have just a page of truth that you can speak over your life in these times where it seems as if nothing is going right, it's going to give you your second wind and your strength because it's about your mind. It's about decisions. If the enemy can corrupt your mind, he can corrupt your decisions. If he can corrupt your decisions, he can corrupt your actions. If he can corrupt your actions, then he can stop you from progressing in the purpose that God has for you. And so I, I, we drill it all the way back. Get you believe. Write the truth in the light that God is giving you. Write your vision and make it plain. Write it down so that you can see it, so that when you get into those dark places, when you are misaligned, when you allow yourself to to do things or say things or be things that you know God did not uh, uh, establish you to be, you can forgive yourself and not allow shame to overcome you to the point where you won't Stand up. I tell my son, if you get down on your knees and you eat food out of a bowl and you lap like a dog, that does not make you a dog. Because the moment you stand up, you are back in your right position. You're back in your rightful place. 
only person going to be talking about you laughing like a dog is your haters the people that don't like you. That's right. But you get up. Awesome. You get up. Yes. How many of you have I enjoyed you today? Yes. Please do stay encouraged. I know our hour is up and we probably had more questions and more discussion that we can have. Join me in thanking uh, Z and not Z Esther Browning for being my lunch buddy today. Please give her a hand clap, an emoji or something. Drop it in the chat. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I do want to close out. Uh, one, thanking everybody for sharing your hour with us. And to remind you about the Shine Conference, if you did not get this QR code before uh, we leave today, because I don't want you to miss this opportunity that will close on Monday for you to get that extra discount. It's Brown Bag 23. We want to see you in January. This is just the tip of the iceberg. A few things about this series. We've This is the 13th conversation. I've had over 40 speakers, over 500 attendees. Join us on December 5th for our pre-conference Shine panel discussion. We're going to do more of this. Did you have fun today, Zia? Yes. Oh, I had fun today. I had so much fun. Yes. Absolutely. You guys need to come to the Shine Conference because we're going to turn it all the way up and we get to love up. and eat and have yes. fun together. This is what girl and talk to... looks like when we get on the yes. phone. We talk about God. We yes. talk about purpose. We talk about passion. We talk about positioning ourselves, what God has for us. But hopefully you enjoyed it. Check it out. And I look forward to seeing you on December 5th and then again on January 13th. Have a wonderful day, and thanks again for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys.